Hello, my name is Hunter, the movie reviewing pony, because when it comes to cinema, sometimes I want to sit in the corner and cry. Hey, it's Fred, and it's really nice out, so I think I'm going to go swimming later. Uh, it's really what? To win it. This pool is what? Why? This is the first YouTuber to get one million subscribers, everyone. The first one. Who? Who let this happen? What is funny about this? It's a guy who raises his voice so high that he can shatter glass in a 15 mile radius. This doesn't make me want to push the subscribe button. It makes me want to flag the video for hate and abuse against my ears. Oh, but it didn't stop there. They had to take it one step further and create something that embeds itself in the ever inquisitive minds of whoever witnesses it and sucks out their very soul. It's Fred the Movie. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. This is a movie that has been on my radar since I began my film reviewing career. If that doesn't scare you enough, this has a lower rating than the annoying orange TV show. And that should scare you! What scares me even more is that during the filming of this movie, no one stood up and said, Damn it, stop! What does that say about the human race? What does that say about logic in general? There's no logic in this movie. There's nothing good about this movie. How it came to be is a mystery. My search for answers began five years ago and I still turned up nothing. Yeah, that's right. I started doing research for this in 2011 to no avail. The internet just seems to want to bury it. Because I can't find anything except a Wikipedia page and an IMDB page. What's more disturbing is that a lot of names went into this. Like, an abnormal amount of names for a movie this bad. And they threw four million dollars at this movie! Four million! It also premiered on Nickelodeon. Are they... Really? Really? That desperate? I mean, I get it, like 80% of the stuff on their channel now is Spongebob reruns, and that's pretty much the only thing keeping them afloat. They've just been shot down so many times by Cartoon Network, I'm amazed they're still a thing. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna be brutally honest, I don't want to review this movie. I had to take 10 minute breaks with this movie. Every two minutes. It's also worth noting it only brought in like half of its budget. Yeah, I hope you choked on all that money, you piece of shit. Okay, that... No, I'm not gonna take that back. Completely called for. No regrets! <sighs> so... Before I strangle myself into getting out of this... Let's suffer through Fred the Movie. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So our film opens up and we see that the source of suffering for this review is Varsity Pictures and The Collective. And you know that we're in good hands when one of them has a Wikipedia page that's five inches long, and the other one is named after something that has so many references on a Google search that they're impossible to find. But I did found them, and turns out in 2015, they rebranded themselves as Studio 71 when they had to sell themselves out. You scared yet? 
No? Well, they also made the annoying orange TV show, and that made me want to destroy all the oranges in my kitchen. In fact, I did. There are no oranges in there anymore. So the film starts out with this obnoxious frame thing going on that's trying to make it look like it's on a Mac. Oh, ho, ho. Do you get the joke? It's because Fred was on the internet. Hi, it's Fred! Today is Friday! Oh my god, say that fast, it sounds like Fred Day! Friday, Fred Day, Friday, Fred Day. We're not even two minutes in! The movie's been going for less than two minutes and it's already doing this obnoxious bullshit! How could this happen in a Oh, and isn't it so creative how they use Google Earth to point out Fred's school? I could do something similar. Look, here's where the Titanic sank. So the plot of this movie, if you can call it, that is that Fred likes this girl. And when I say if you can call it that, I also meant what I said, movie and plot. Anyway, it's around this time that we find out that Fred is kind of a stalker. Also, he's somehow able to keep up with a mid-size SUV. I don't care how fast you can run. You are a human being with legs, and that is a car. Also, Fred is really stupid. In fact, I think that's the whole point. I never got why people liked Fred. I mean, what is it? Is it the high-pitched voice? Because that's just obnoxious. Is it because he's stupid? Because that's mildly mean-spirited towards the mentally challenged people. He's certainly not funny, so that's out the window immediately. Is there something in the younger generation that's liking this crap? Because, uh, need I remind you, this is still on the air because of the younger generation. Oh, and this, might I add, yet another reason why the younger generation should not be allowed, allowed to watch TV. Oh, and need I remind you, this, yet another reason why you can't watch TV. I ain't going to heaven, I already sold my soul to Lucifer! So Fred somehow manages to keep up with the SUV all the way back to her house. Oh, but it's okay because she lives right next door. And it's around this time we meet Kevin, who is a jerk for... Okay, don't introduce him. Just cut over to your something. Get her face out of my face, please. This weekend, it's crucial in our relationship because... Wait for it. Get ready. <laughs> it's coming. And I've lost all patience. Oh yeah, isn't it hilarious? He's a loser. The girl never notices him. Oh, that's funny. That hasn't been done 10 million times. That's hilarious. I'm gonna shoot myself. My mom won't mind. I have friends over all the time and she never cares. My dad doesn't care either. <laughs> Mostly because, uh, he's not here. Oh my god, he cares so little I almost passed out. Somebody call 911! Shorty fire burning on the dance floor! Oh my god, you could actually hear the mic breaking in there. So, guess what happens next? Guess. Just, just, just guess. Have you figured it out? Yeah, that's right. He screams more. Today was the worst Friday ever! <laughs> oh, 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 what, what was, what, what was that? <laughs> that is, that's... That. <laughs> oh. That. <laughs> oh. 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 Take the Oscar away from Leonardo DiCaprio. I think we have a performance that has bested him yet. This scene doesn't even add anything. They're just throwing rubber balls at him. And that is all they are doing. Ha! It's funny. And his response to this is... No. I just love his reaction. He's like appalled that she even asked him to stop. If I don't get any food in my body, then there's gonna be no blood in my head, and then my head might fall because there's no blood in it. Uh, okay, we're not even halfway through the movie. I'm not allowed to be 100% done with a movie until, like, at least halfway through the movie. What did, did 
you can see his head stuffed in his shirt! You threw three million dollars at this movie, you could at least make it look good! This shit goes on forever. It, it, it just, it, this just, it just goes. But they didn't stop, no, no! I, I swear, at this point in filming, someone had to have quit. Someone had to have quit, and good god, could you get any more... Uh, I want to say cheap, but I think half of the budget for this movie went to drugs and hookers. That or went to purchasing the entirety of the National Helium Reservoir that he had to inhale. What relevance does this have? It has none. It has none! Frickin' none! It's just, it's just, oh, we need an excuse for him to act more like an idiot. Uh, have him, have him spray a hose in his mouth. Yeah, perfect. Why was the hose already on? Kevin is a big, fat nothing, and I can- Now all of a sudden he starts ranting on and on and on and on and on about Kevin. A character we barely know and have only seen twice in the entire movie, but all of a sudden we need to paint him as the bad guy. There's a way to paint your bad guy. This is not it. Then he like fantasizes some more, but all I have to wonder is how long did you have to close off the cul-de-sac to shoot this scene? I bet those people would really like to park their car. Some of you may think that it's wrong for that to be my major concern right now, but... I don't think so. Oh yeah, then the cops show up and they run into Kevin's house and they... take Kevin to prison, I guess. <laughs> it's funny because of police brutality. So yeah, they're next door neighbors and there's a wall. This is relevant, I think, but... Uh, you, you know what? I think everything that they throw out in this movie actually isn't relevant, so... Yeah. You know, if you told me that this movie murdered an entire family, I'd probably believe you. Oh yeah, and this is Bertha, as is labeled on screen right there. You know, you don't have to put her name on screen after you said her name out loud. People are gonna get the idea! People are going to get the idea! I know this is hard to believe, movie, but people are gonna get the idea that that's her name! Who's Bertha? That's Bertha? No! Oh! Bertha is the name of that rock over there in the corner of the yard! Anyway, she informs Fred that Judy thinks that the kiddie pool is stupid. Wasting a good two minutes of my life, I think? Wow, you're really pushing it to reach that feature-length finish line. Sometimes I don't think I know anything about women. I need some advice. Wish my dad was here. So Fred goes to consult his fake dad. Which, because it's in his imagination, I guess? And his name is John C. <laughs> Mr. Cena, what the hell are you doing? Were you down on your luck? Was it an easy grab for you? Is this before or after your wife left you? I mean, I get it. Wrestlers are basically actors. They gotta entertain a crowd. They gotta put on a show. In a way, I respect them, but that doesn't change the fact that what the hell is he doing here? You know what? I actually like him because he hurts Fred really badly in this movie. But that doesn't change the fact. Why is he here? Why is John Cena in this movie? I guess this is where all the budget went. Holy shit, that explains everything. You threw most of the money at John Cena, and that's why the effects are so shit. So then he, uh, starts fantasizing again. Oh, goody. This scene goes for half a minute. It feels like the scene goes for half an hour, so I'll skip it for you. Nothing is gonna come between our love, Judy! Nothing! Yeah, but unfortunately, Kevin is outside. Why does this matter? Well, normally it wouldn't. 
Except that Kevin, for whatever reason, makes a habit of noting whenever Fred leaves his house to pick on him! That's... really good allocation of your time. Oh, okay, what are you going to Judy's house for a little play day, huh? How are you guys gonna do that? Uh, 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 uh. Truly, this is a divine gift! Truly, truly, the greatest of the current generation of children ever to walk the earth. The greatest minds from around the world clearly came together to create this fantastic masterpiece of a film. Yeah, no, forget Spotlight, I'm taking the Oscar away from that. It's clearly going to Fred the movie. So Kevin doesn't really do anything, in fact neither of them do anything, they just sort of stand there and talk for a while, not adding anything to the plot, not adding anything to the world in general, or anything at all. They're both idiots. One of them's a loser, and the other one, if you wanted to commit suicide, you climb his ego and jump down to his conscience. Seriously though, of two million sperm from their respective parents, these two were the fastest? Truly, this is the epitome of greatness. So Fred runs back into the house with a fucking sissy ass run. Dear God, are you gonna drive the point any further in? Oh, by the way, moving truck shows up, but I, I, I don't care. So then Fred's mom starts banging on the door trying to get in. Despite the fact that they're using Kevin's voice and calling him by his last name. You know, at this point, if I was Kevin and I was neighbor with, with this kid, yeah, I'd want to kill him too. Although I don't know why anyone would want to. Maybe because of your voice? Uh-huh. I don't know why they decided to show her on camera for this movie. Throughout the web shorts, it, she was always off camera. Now that she's on camera, she just seems like a crackhead. At least that's how it seems to me. She just seems like a really negligent parent who sleeps a lot. Whose brilliant idea was this? Probably the same person who said John Cena should play his dad. I can't go over there and ask Judy to my house with Kevin out there? He'll embarrass me! I have never cared about anything so little in my entire life. Anyway, he once again seeks advice from the one and only John C! And I got to admit, I kind of enjoyed this scene. But only because John Cena literally beats the snot out of Fred. By the way, I love how the camera is clearly panned up to hide the mat that you put down on the floor. Fred comes up with this really stupid idea to use a mini trampoline to jump over the wall that's between his backyard and Judy's backyard. Cause, you know, it's okay, this doesn't make him look like a creepy stalker guy or anything, Fred's the protagonist of the film. What follows is Fred performing pratfall after pratfall as he seems to, like, intentionally trip over this trampoline. I'd like for the audience to note that the footwork here seems to have him trip long before he even reaches the trampoline. And now fly. So then he ties shit to his head because he thinks that'll help, but it it it, it, it fucking doesn't. Okay, fine, that doesn't happen, but aren't you starting to wish it did? Cause here's what he actually does. I hurt myself today. So then 
Fred Fuckface comes up with a better idea to dig his way under the wall. Cause you know, they gotta come up with brilliant ideas as to how he can be an idiot. God forbid he does something practical, like climb over the wall with a ladder, or given the height of the wall, just use his fucking hands to climb over said wall. Also, I'm about done with this. This being all of this. This scene just goes, much like all of the scenes in this movie just go. They're really pushing to reach that feature length finish line with this. And then, because this movie is so realistic, he actually ends up building a tunnel akin to that in The Great Escape. But, unlike The Great Escape, this is Fred the movie. So it's really, really shit. And there's this bit where he finds its electrical cable, which he cuts with the shovel, which cuts off the power to a number of houses, including Kevin's house, in which case he ends up hurting himself very badly. Oh my damn it, that was awesome! I wonder how many people are without power now because of you being a fucking moron. That is my only concern. My only concern is for those people who you have wronged. So where does this end up going? Well, I think he succeeds, or he might not. I have no idea, honestly. Does he dig into the wrong yard? Is this the people who just moved in? I don't fucking know because the movie isn't clear. Oh my damn, I dug all the way inside it. Also, that might be racist. Might be. I have no idea why he's saying, oh my damn it, so many times. Just like, I have no idea why he's wearing his goddamn suspenders everywhere. Because, I don't understand this design change. Because, see, here's the thing. In the web shorts, he had his shirt on. All the time. Now, all of a sudden, they look at this and say, Darn, fuck it, I don't know, the suspenders. All the time. I want to find the person behind this design choice and stab him. I have the perfect disguise. I ordered it from the back of a comic book and it is amazing. It's an invisibility suit and it's going to make me completely invisible. You guys so Fred you? uses this thing wow. and totally for whatever reason it works. Unfortunately, five minutes later, for whatever ridiculous reason, they decide, oh wait, no, that was what he was fantasizing, with no clear indication that he was fantasizing it. I imagine it like this. Uh, okay, so he pulls out the cloak, he goes and does a bunch of stuff, and then the director was like, wait, that's stupid, let's go back. Should we take out all the footage that we just shot? No, leave it in. We'll pick up where we left off with him pulling out the cloak. That's what that freaking do! Oh yeah, by the way, the thing, oh it doesn't work. Feeling. What, did you expect it to work? Because it doesn't fucking work. But no, this is a perfect excuse for him to act more like an idiot. Oh, brilliant writing work here, Holmes, brilliant! We have even more opportunities for him to be a moron! <laughs> I guess I have to find a better disguise! Oh yeah, then the moving truck leaves? Cause... Plot relevance. I would also like to note that since he fell off the treadmill, Kevin broke his fucking arm! Oh but no! That's not gonna stop him from picking on Fred the moment he leaves the house! Because that is apparently what the universe has demanded that he do! He's fucking fascinated by this getup that Fred has on. Fucking fascinated by it. Get a fucking life. I also find it fascinating how he hits the doorbell like 50 times and nobody goes to answer it because they're all fucking around in the fucking living room. Did you not hear the doorbell go off like 50 times? Anyway, you'd think that this would be taken as an indication that, oh, maybe Judy moved away, but instead... Oh my damn it, Asian people kidnapped Judy! Which is... Mildly mean-spirited towards Asians once again! 
Which brings up a question that I have. Does Fred have a thing against Asians or something? Like some mixed messages, maybe? Oh, yeah, you know that obnoxious scene from earlier where he's singing on the bed? Oh, yeah. Suddenly it has relevance. Oh, I don't even know what number to call. Somebody call now, boy. That's who I have to call. Okay, I don't make a habit of doing this, but you know what's probably more entertaining than this movie? A freaking YouTube ad. Here, let's make a comparison, shall we? Was that not 10 million times more entertaining than this movie? That's not me wanting to put another ad in. I legitimately think that a YouTube ad is more entertaining than this freaking movie. Anyway, the police don't take him seriously and they actually hang up on him. Which, I don't know, might be against 911 policy. I don't know. Maybe that's because they moved. What results with this news is the worst thing I've seen in cinema history. This is akin to Tommy Wiseau saying, I did not hit her. The entirety of the movie Food Fight, an 800 mile an hour tsunami, socks for Christmas, zombies in Birdemic 2, the fact that nobody eats bacon in the 21st century, and the fact that the dog who saved Halloween is a ripoff of The Burbs with Tom Hanks. It's up there with those. Life is pain. What can I say? No, honestly, what can I say that this scene doesn't say for itself very loud and clear? It's obnoxious. It's stupid. It symbolizes everything I hate about this character and this movie. Congratulations, humanity. You made this. Congratulations. My I fucking hate you! Huh? Wasn't that fun? Did the human race gain something out of that entire scene? Wasn't that wonderful? I think the entire human race can better from this. By God, everyone deserves to burn. I don't want to set the world on fire. But then suddenly the scene gets interrupted by John C. And then they both grab a Humvee because it turns out Judy's been kidnapped. Except that's bullshit. Yeah, he's fantasizing again. He's fantasizing. Wasn't it very clear that this is a fantasy? They don't make this shit obvious enough! The scene's not even funny! He's not funny! Neither of them are funny! Anyway, so Fred wakes up from his... ...nightmare. And he has yet another... ...really... ...stupid idea. It. Judy wants me to come find her. We have a psychic connection, and the dream is the only way she could possibly communicate with me. Uh, no! You just made that right the fuck up out of nowhere, you dumb fucking child of a man. I hate you with every fiber of my being. And I mean that in the most sincere way imaginable. So he somehow figures out her address and finds it on Google Maps. There's no scene where he's figuring out her address. He just, for whatever fucking reason, knows it. Also, hey, fuckface, this isn't how Google Images works. 
You can't just zoom in on a fucking window and see the person inside on the goddamn toilet. The only problem is, Judy moved to the other side of the woods, which apparently is, like, I don't know, haunted or some shit. I don't know, kids go in and they never come out. It's never explained, it's barely talked about, the joke that it's building up to isn't funny. Honestly, it's probably the most pointless thing in the movie. Oh, but it's funny, he pissed himself. Ha <laughs> ha, toilet humor, it's hilarious. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. So Fred figures out that there's a bus line that takes him about a block away from where Judy currently lives. Oh, but is funny because he originally dialed 911 to try and figure this out. Therefore wasting all of their time as well. Am I dead yet? What the fuck is this? Why is it here? What purpose does it serve? If this is comedy, I don't want to live anymore. People put pen to paper and wrote this in the script. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, find me the guy who plays Fred because I need to have a talk with him. We need to sit the fuck down and have a fucking talk about his fucking film career. Because I got some brilliant advice for him. Fucking stop! You are a dead internet phenomenon. If you can even call it a phenomenon. Yeah, I'll call it a phenomenon, but not for the reason you think. It's a phenomenon because no one can figure out how it became so big. How did we let this happen? How did living beings let this happen? I believe that we're all to blame for this. I mean, we, it's our fault that this happened. We, the internet, did this. It's our fault. All hope is lost. Oh, you know what else is perfect about this? It's the sign that you clearly left on the door. Oh, it's perfect, perfect, perfect. You filmed this in a fucking hotel, yet you couldn't take the sign down to make it a little less obvious. You threw three million dollars at this movie. So Fred leaves on his magical journey, and sadly, right as he leaves home, he does not get hit by a car. What does end up happening is Kevin follows him all the way to the fucking bus stop. Because he has nothing better to do. Where are you going anyway? Why do you care? I'm not gonna tell you. Oh my fucking god! No! No, 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 no! You are not allowed to say something smart in this movie! You can't just start saying logical things halfway through the fucking movie! You've already established that the character's an idiot! Also, before you guys pull the whole bullying card out, this is abnormal behavior, even by bullying standards. Fred's literally just walking down the street, not doing anything. And this kid goes out of his way when he clearly has 10 million better things to be doing! Be on the number seven bus. This is the number okay, seven then bus. pull the cord. Or fucking don't. Just sit there like an idiot. I know, but if Kevin knew all the bus routes and where they were going, then if I got on the right bus, he would know where I was actually going. So by getting on the wrong bus, he would never know I was actually going to Judy's house. Fuck you! So the bus takes him to. Aquatic center, but it's clearly a pool. Oh, and Bertha's there. You're not wearing a swimsuit. That's it. That that that. There's nothing. There's nothing further to that. She's just there. 
The seed doesn't add anything! So she buries him in the sand. My neck is hot, but my feet That's are it. The, she buries him in the sand. But what if I have to go to and the bathroom? And then just leaves him there all day. <coughs> Oh, come on, that's disgusting! What does this add to anything? You know, besides the relentless force that's building on my patience with this film. This is what I like to call a filler formula. As in, every now and then they'll do something that's plot relevant, but most of the movie is just really stupid stuff. That's it, that's all this is. It's all filler. All of it is filler. Like... Like, if they, if they actually focused on what was plot relevant, the movie would run for 20 minutes. Maybe not even that, but oh my... Uh, sweet Celestia! <laughs> oh! Oh! And here's another thing. He's struggling, yet there's clearly at most two inches of sand on top of him. Congratulations, Fred the Movie! You're now on par with Santa and the Ice Cream Buddy. Santa and the fucking Ice Cream Buddy. <laughs> so then Fred gets out of the sand because no movie wants to be on par with Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. And the only reason they did this shot was so they could put something in the fucking trailer. Oh, that's brilliant. What follows is a series of awkward scenes, like extremely awkward. The first is one where he goes to the laundromat, but proceeds to take off all of his clothes. No, I'm not kidding. Then he goes to a fucking car wash. Not in a car. And no, it doesn't kill him like this normally would to any normal human being. Thereby filling all of the children who are watching this movie with the brilliant idea that it's okay to stand through a car wash. Yeah, no, he walks out of this completely dry and with... That was awesome. Oh my fucking god. It's about to get frightening cause I'm out with no license she gives me... And now, for your displeasure, he is auto-tuned and singing. And this scene also exists. Also, what the fuck? You know what the worst part is? This is the halfway point. I'm pausing to allow that to sink in because everyone at home is like, what the hell? Then there's a scene where he goes to a pet store and oh tries to purchase a dog because he thinks it's a squirrel. And then he proceeds to try to steal the dog. This isn't fun to watch. It's awkward. It's weird. The whole scene just feels uncomfortable. You feel dirty just from watching the damn thing. This is Mace! I will spray you. No, what makes this scene worse is that the two doing? store owners are also really, really stupid. It's not funny. It's not entertaining. Not in the slightest is this the least bit entertaining. And the camera gets all up close to them. It's uncomfortable. It's just... I HATE THIS SCENE! I HATE IT! You know it's an indication that somebody's going to hell? Somebody looked at this scene and said, Yeah, no. Kids will like this. Kids will like this scene. This is funny, hilarious, and original. Ugh. This movie is sick. Okay, this movie is sick. I think it was, like, I think it's designed as some sort of weapon. That's what this is. It's a weapon designed against Al-Qaeda. They shipped them over there and then dropped copies of the movie on them. There's nothing to be gained. There's nothing. No redeeming qualities about this movie. 
The scene resolves itself as one of the store owners sprays the other one in the face somehow, and then he just puts the dog back and then runs away. And yeah, that's it. Wasn't that scene fun, ladies and gentlemen? Wasn't that just a wonderfully enjoyable scene? Oh, sweet Celestia, there's 35 minutes left in this fucking movie. You don't want a scene to turn out like this, for God's sake. When it starts making the viewer feel uncomfortable, that's a sign that you failed. A scene like this can ruin an entire movie. Not that this movie wasn't already ruined, because you already managed to do that. So he runs into someone who only speaks Spanish, and we get more mild racism. There's something wrong with me. Why is there a voice in my head that doesn't even make sense? Are you a spaceman? Is that what you are? You're doing something to me, aren't you? You're gonna ruin my brain! Oh my god, he's a Donald Trump supporter! The evidence is here! It's all here! You can't hide it! That's it! Fred! He supports the wall! Which isn't gonna happen! And if you're looking back on this from the other side of the political apocalypse... How's it looking over there? What follows is a scene of him running and screaming. Because... Because fuck you. Is it funny yet? Is it funny yet? Is it funny yet? Nope! No, it's still not funny! By the way, that's some great green screening right there. Yeah, good. Is this film even finished?! I need to find the people who made this movie and give them a peace of mind. Doing something to the copy of this movie I have on hand isn't enough. You know what? No! It's never enough! It's never enough! It's like, if I throw a pen at you, you gotta blame me or have a fist fight with the pen! And he ends up on a dam... Damn. ...somehow. Damn. And this is where we meet this guy, who's... ...really fucking proud of this dam. Soak in all the damn beauty! I'll tell you what, she's the single greatest feat of engineering in the entire county! Hey, you know what this dam is made out of, don't you? Sweat and ingenuity, friend. Sweat and ingenuity. <laughs> Starting to get a little uncomfortable with this guy here. It's weird. He's only in this one scene. It's... Ugh. It's more filler. That's what it is. That's what all of this is. Anyway, he informs him that... Wait. There's no damn on this map. Where the fuck did he come from? It, he was on a dam and all of a sudden in front of the woods! This movie can't even get that right. Oh my god! You know what? This brings up a very valid question. Where did that three million go to? Did it go to paying all the actors in this movie? Well, John Cena maybe, but I don't think that's where the three million would go to. Did it go to renting the Humvee? Well, maybe. I could see that, actually. It clearly didn't go to the writing or the effects. I can't believe I'm saying this. And part of me still doesn't really want to. But I hold Titanic 2 above this movie. Oh! You have no idea how hard it was for me to say that. And Titanic 2 had a lower budget than this. But they actually managed to do more. At least Titanic 2 was enjoyably bad. This... This is cringe stuff. It's not even fun to watch. So Fred finally goes into the woods after... I don't know how long, and meets... Talking Deer? Why, good sir, pray tell, does this happen? For what purpose does this serve? The deer only appears in one measly scene, and then is never seen throughout the remainder of the film. I do declare, good sir, who let this scene into our movie? <laughs> oh. This film is a putrid mess! 
This is just pointless scene after pointless scene. They're not accomplishing anything plot-wise. It's actually really pathetic. Hey, you know what else is pathetic? The puppetry and lip sync on this goddamn deer. Some of us wait too much. Hey, can I drop one with you? If this is the extent of nature, yeah, I'm good. Burn it down. So remember the joke earlier where What's-His-Face never came out of the woods? Well, yeah, great. Is this the joke? The joke is that he never left the woods and became a crazy tree person. Is it that funny? No, it's not funny! The scene runs for ten seconds. Then he runs away. And then we never saw him again. We're not even in Albuquerque! So Fred literally starts camping at the bus stop. Okay. But then Kevin just so happens to be driving by! Get a job! Mom, drive around the block. I'm not your chauffeur. Mom! Holy Christ, he actually goes out of his way to do this. Like, I'm not crazy! Like, this is just uncomfortable levels of bullying. Telling an adult in this scenario isn't gonna do anything. This guy just needs a swift kick in the teeth. So then Fred starts eating a bunch of raw sardines. I'm pretty sure you get diseases from that, but he he doesn't end up getting any diseases, and that makes me very sad. But don't worry, we're like down to the last third of the movie. I know that sounds like a lot. And that's because it is. So Fred falls asleep and asks this guy to wake him up when the bus comes. And the bus shows up, and Fred gets on the bus. And there's this old lady who gives him a dog for some reason. And then he finally gets to Judy's fucking house. And the two of them finally get together, and then they live happily ever after. No, I'm just fucking with you. He was fantasizing the whole fucking thing! And once again, there was no clear indication that he was fantasizing anything at all! You need some kind of indication. You need something to tell you that he's fantasizing all of this in his head! When you don't add an indication like this, it just... It's confusing! Also, it's just an excuse to add more filler! Oh my god! <laughs> and it's not over yet! He finally gets to Judy's house! She's having a party! Good. I have never cared about something so little in my entire life. And look, even Kevin's there. Oh, good. More of an excuse for him to act like idiots. Do you remember all of those awkward scenes earlier? Yeah, no. Chuck up another one, because this scene is also really fucking awkward. Directors and writers strive to avoid scenes like this. They don't want them in the movie because one of these can ruin a whole movie. This one has like five, maybe even more. So then everyone starts pulling out their phones for some reason. Oh, then Kevin hits Fred with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. I don't fucking know what it is. But apparently this is hilarious to everyone. Hilarious, not original. Seriously, this is downright hilarious to them. It doesn't make any fucking sense. This movie has an ass backwards idea as to what exactly humor is. And it's nothing in this movie. Also, Fred throws up. Because... The movie hates you. The movie hates me too. 
The movie hates all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Phillies and gentle cults, I have found the key to world peace. We must all join hands together against a common enemy. This movie. We, we, we all join hands together. Well, you, you do. I don't have hands. And everybody hates this movie. We'll bring together world peace. We'll, we'll bring together world peace together hating this movie. It's like Code Geass, where the world came together all to hate Lelouch. Also, why is she fucking smiling? She looks way too freaking happy for someone who just got thrown up all over. Anyway, Fred runs away. Just like I want to do. All the time. I want to run away from this movie. Run, Fred! Run far away from here! Run far away from the depths of society where no one will find you! It's the only way you're gonna keep me from clawing your eyes out! If I ever see you in the street, I will literally strangle you! So the bus takes Fred home. Good. I guess at this point they decided, well, we've had enough filler. <laughs> that was so humiliating! Wait a minute, now he's back to talking to the camera! Where's the consistency in this movie? If you're gonna talk to the camera, talk to it the whole way through! You can't just skimp out on a plot device like that! Also, the video they were recording with their phones, yeah, that got posted to YouTube! Except it shouldn't be, because this clearly goes against their guidelines for bullying! You're seriously telling me that a YouTuber who makes a movie that has a YouTube video in it that contains bullying does not know about the policy and guidelines of YouTube and their policies against bullying and uploads to YouTube? Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Oh, sweet Celestia, I am in hell. Some form of hell spawn made this movie and didn't bother to do any research. And I didn't hear Kevin screaming, oh, it's a prank, dude, it's a prank, which, for whatever reason, makes everything okay. So, yeah, no, I, I don't see any way that this could have gotten past the guidelines. Come on, this was back when YouTube was half decent with this stuff. There's 10 million problems with this image alone. First of all, the download this song down near the bottom, the fact that none of the videos on the side exist, the fact that Fred isn't even logged in, and no one in their right name is gonna name themselves Kev Smell My Fart. A YouTube channel that was apparently only active four years ago, and he clearly has one video despite the fact that in this still it says he has six. And the one video uploaded on this channel is the best party ever video. Hmm, isn't that interesting? It's gained 120,000 views in the past four years. That's unbelievably sad. You know what else is unbelievably sad? You go to watch the video, and it's not even shot from the perspective of one of these people's phones. They just took a clip from the movie. What baffles me even more is that this video has more likes than dislikes. This channel has nearly half as many subscribers as we do right now, around 6,000. Yes, 3,800. You do know the channel was made specifically for this video, right? How did you fuck up a YouTube tie-in this badly? Fred... As a channel with over a million subscribers should know the basics of this crap. Worst part is, the shots appear in the movie, so you clearly shot it from a phone at some point. Which begs the question, how did you mess it up this badly? Congratulations, the movie that you made about a YouTuber couldn't even get the YouTube tie-in correct. Holy fuck. Fucking shit. Oh my gosh, another person just watched it! And another! Oh my, oh my god, it's so funny because you refreshing the page brings up the view count. Except when you do that on YouTube, 
That doesn't happen! Seriously? Try it. So Fred decides that he's gonna throw his own party! With blackjack and hookers! And he storms over to Kevin's house to say that he's video. not invited. Uh, yeah! That'll show him! Don't worry, it's almost over. Also, you wear a hat indoors. Good. Anyway, Fred goes through, like, a bunch of people and doesn't invite any of them. Cause... I don't fucking know. Because... This movie doesn't know what it wants to be anymore! It's just a cluster of things that they just threw together and said, Yes, this is movie. Throw onto screen. The only person who does get invited is Bertha because she likes him? I think? I don't fucking get it either. They shoot a bunch of crap for this fake party, and that, 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 that's about it. They just shoot a bunch of crap for a fake party. No, this is good. This is good. You put your budget to real good use. That's like that money could go towards starving children in Africa or something. No, we had to make Fred the movie. Don't you feel bad now? And this crap goes on for... God knows how long. It's obnoxious. It doesn't stop. It keeps going. It doesn't freaking stop. The next day, he edits it together in... What the fuck is that? Hello, brandless video editing software. Good to know you're not using Sony Vegas. Anyway, he screams with himself for a while, then uploads the video. And this is where I blew a gasket when first watching this movie. You're probably wondering, oh god, how long does this scene go on for? Well, I actually counted. This scene goes on for... How many minutes, you're probably wondering? One? Nah. Two? Not even close. Three minutes! Three! It was three! Three! That's it. There's just three minutes of this. The, the, this is the whole end of the movie. When I first watched this, I was like, how long has this scene been going? And yeah, it goes for a straight three minutes. It feels like an eternity because nothing is happening. This is it. The cap on the fucking bottle. Everyone, they knew that, okay, we need an extra three minutes for the movie. So they just threw this in. That's the only explanation. And as you can see, it got them to their feature length finish line. You think I'm skimping you here? No, this is all there is to see. It's not funny, it's not entertaining, it's just this random compilation of crap. I have it running four times as fast, and it still feels like it's going for too long. After that, the movie just sort of, like, just ends. I can't make heads or tails of the ending, too. I wanted to make it to Fred's party. But my girl didn't want to go. I like the party. She don't like the party. I like to break it down. Oh. I will be at the next one. This is about the extent of the end of the movie. It's just like a bunch of people saying that, yeah, I couldn't make it to the party, but I will go to the next party. I'm sure it's because I was yeah, when he was That's people. the end of the movie. I've been out what moral is there to learn? What purpose? What? in life have we learned? What have we accomplished by uh, this movie? What is there to be learned? What is there to be said? What can be said? 
Anyway, towards the very end, there's this thing about Fred's dad or something I don't fucking know. Also, before the movie ends, we get one more appearance from... John C. And hey, look! Judy comes over! Which means Fred got what he wanted! Hi, Isn't that nice? You're tall. Great. And then they... hang out, I guess. And... thankfully... that... is where the damn thing ends. <sighs> okay. Give me a sec. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> this is it. The absolute worst. Oh, I get it now. I get it. I can see every reason as to why the internet wanted to bury this movie. Nothing can be taken away from it. Nothing can be gained through watching it. It's not even fun to watch. It's just cringeworthy. The only gimmick he has going for him is the high-pitched voice. The writing isn't funny. Nothing is funny. So the scenes are just awkward. The script is terrible. 90% of the movie is literally filler. 90%. Do not watch this movie. Do not seek out this movie. Don't even buy it for someone as a joke. It's not funny. It's not even good for riffing material. It's terrible for riffing material. And I seriously encourage you to find a better way to spend your money than supporting uncreative hacks like these. Fred should have died with the YouTube channel. And this movie deserves to stay exactly where it is. Buried at the bottom of the internet. So now you're probably wondering, well it ended there, right? No. No it fucking didn't. Two more fucking movies and a fucking TV show cancelled after one season. Are you real? ARE YOU REAL?! Ugh. My advice is you avoid this movie like the plague. If you seek out this movie, you're not gonna enjoy it. Believe me, there are millions of better things for you to do with your time. My name is Hunter, and this has been a Hunter Review. God, what a terrible movie. There once was a guy who created a machine, a thing that would take people to and from some other world. And when he arrived, he had run into a pony who smiled and decided that they both should go see a film. When that movie sucked, they decided to join forces And then they created a new show called Hunter Reviews <laughs>